We step into and we do not step into the same river. We are and we are not. These two simple sentences set forth the Buddhist notion of Pratichat Samutpada in a very elegant and simplistic manner. Pratichat Samutpada is a keystone in Buddhist thought which states that all things arrive from a complex, interdependent web of mutually and constantly occurring causes. Everything is causally linked to everything else, and to conceive of anything is also to conceive of its causes. Hence, the idea of any independent substance is merely an illusion. The river is therefore continually being changed by causes around it, and because it is impossible to conceive of the river without these causes, the river itself cannot be thought of as an independent entity. This quotation hints at a very core principle of Buddhism. However, neither the Buddha nor a Buddhist thinker spoke these words. It was instead a Greek philosopher by the name of Heraclitus. Unfortunately, the majority of Heraclitus's work had been lost over time. The only remnants of his philosophical theories are revealed through other philosophers' quotations of his work. However, even with this seemingly small amount of information, it is still possible to piece together some of his basic philosophical theories. Many of the theories that take shape bear a striking resemblance to the teachings of the Buddha. Does this mean that Heraclitus took some of his philosophies from the Buddhist teaching? Or was it the case that Heraclitus and the Buddha developed their theories completely independent of each other? To fully answer this question, an inve investigation into the philosophies, lives, and time periods of the Buddha and Heraclitus must be undertaken. The most easily recognizable similarity in the Buddha's teachings and in Heraclitus' philosophy is the idea of impermanence. Both men hold as a basic principle the notion that everything around us is constantly in a state of change. This notion bears Heraclitus' name in Western philosophy and is known as Heraclitan Flux. All things are in exchange for fire and fire for all things, as goods for gold and gold for goods. This example and the previously mentioned river example are two of the surviving quotations that set forth this philosophy. Likewise, a core teaching of the Buddha deals with the idea of the impermanence of the world and the self. This teaching is further to explain that it is a person's ignorance of this idea that leads to suffering. This can be clearly seen in the Patika Samutpada Vibhanga Sutta, where the Buddha creates a causal chain that begins with ignorance and is eventually manifested as suffering. This chain is constantly repeating itself and is known as Pratichat Samutpada. Due to the scarcity of information available, it is difficult to tell whether or not Heraclitus would agree that this constant change is a cycle of suffering. However, it is clear that Heraclitus does think of Heraclitus' flux as being a cycle. As he says in one of his quotations, the same thing is both living and dead, and the waking and the sleeping, and young and old. For these things transformed are those, and those transformed back again are these. And again in a later quotation where he says, the beginning and the end are common on the circumference of a circle. Although the context of how he meant for this quotation cannot directly be seen, it does seem, however, that Porphyry, in quoting Heraclitus, does take this as more than a mere statement of geometry. Therefore, it can be speculated with at least some degree of certainty that Heraclitus, like the Buddha, did believe that the flux in this world was in some way a cyclical process. Although the idea of impermanence was the most notable similarity, there are many other corollary beliefs that can be seen. For example, both the Buddha and Heraclitus had a negative view on the body. It can be shown that the Buddha held this view when he referred to the body as a nine-hold, ever-leaking wound. Similarly, Heraclitus' distaste for the body is shown when he says that corpses are more fit to be thrown out than dung. Some other similarities include each one's belief in the rejection of intoxicating beverages and the belief in listening to personal experience and reason over dogma. These similarities although interesting in themselves, are not nearly as astounding as the philosophies of impermanence that each created. This is because both in Greece and India, doctrines of this sort had never been set forth. So did Heraclitus steal ideas from the Buddha, or did the two philosophers arrive independently by mere coincidence? However unlikely it may seem, the answer to the similarity almost irrefutably does not rely on Heraclitus' borrowing any ideas from the Buddha, or vice versa. The most powerful argument for this is the fact that Heraclitus and the Buddha were contemporaries. Siddhartha Gautama, who would later become the Buddha, was born circa 563 before the Common Era in India, and Heraclitus was born circa 540 before the Common Era in Greece. 
The earliest direct interaction between Buddhist thinkers and the Greeks was during Alexander the Great's conquest of Asia Minor. This, however, did not take place until the 4th century before the Common Era, over a hundred years after the death of the Buddha and Heraclitus. This would seem to point conclusively that both the Buddha and Heraclitus created their philosophies independent of one another. However, another peculiar similarity might shed some light on how they were able to create such similar philosophies independent of one another. Heraclitus and the Buddha had nearly identical upbringings. Heraclitus was born into an aristocratic family in Ephesus, Greece. He was the eldest son in his family and was next in line to take rule. However, he did not wish to take up a political life, and instead resigned the hereditary ruling position to his brother, so he could pursue a philosophical lifestyle. The story of the Buddha is nearly identical to this. The Buddha was born a prince in the village of Kapilvastu. He, like Heraclitus, eventually left his inheritance and his ruling position in order to seek out a different life. For the Buddha, however, his pursuit was to try to learn how to overcome suffering. So from nearly identical upbringings come very similar philosophies. Therefore, the similarities in the philosophy of Heraclitus and the teachings of the Buddha do not seem to be a coincidence. It is not the case, however, that they were directly influenced by each other. The fact that they were contemporaries and never encountered one another explicitly rules this out. The connection seems to lie in their upbringing. Both of these men were raised to be rulers. However, this fact alone does not explain much because there were countless other men at the time who were raised with the same education for the intention of taking rule. What distinguishes these two from many others is the fact that they abandoned their claim to rule and instead pursued their own path. The Buddha left to pursue a way to overcome suffering, and it led him to his philosophy. It is unfortunate that what Heraclitus was seeking to discover through his philosophical lifestyle has been lost to time. With similar beginnings and the similar ending philosophy each reached, I would speculate that Heraclitus's philosophical inquiry was geared towards a similar focus as the Buddhist quest to overcome suffering.